Trading Sim, the number one market replay platform in the world, where you can learn to trade like a pro at your own pace. Hey day traders, this is Al Hill from TradingSim.com. Today we have a good one for you. Um, so we're looking at the stochastic RSI. Just uh, finished up a great article um, on the indicator. And so now I want to show you um, a trading example. Um, so I hate to disappoint, but just to tell you guys at the beginning of this video, we're looking at IBM, right? Not a low float, fast mover, uh, you know, big blue. And um, the reason we're doing this is because what I have noticed from placing thousands of trades is that high float large cap stocks respond to oscillators much better than low float fast moving high volatility stocks, right? Um, you know, that's because it takes more money and more momentum to shift these uh, big players. Um, so when the moves show up, they're real. Uh, so to that example, we're going to be covering um, IBM today. All right, so let me just play the action here in Trading Sim. All right, so first thing you want to do, you do not want to trade solely based on overbought, oversold signals in the indicator. That should have come um, through pretty clearly in the article, but just want to reinforce that. You need another validation point, okay? So for this example, we're going to use something that's pretty old, trend lines, okay? So I use the Richard Wyckoff method where you try to draw uh, clear channels, right? Um, you know, lines parallel to one another. Um, so here, I uh, give it maybe about there, right? So I know for some of you that may look a little out there, like, well, why not from here to here, right? I don't get into these weird... Um, angles it just makes my chart cluttered it confuses me I start to see things that aren't there um, another question you may have is well why not draw the line here well the answer is you can right you absolutely can but as you can see things get kind of messy here so I try to look for, for clean points right um, for some reason IBM stopped there so there may be something there but again if you where you have clear support and clear resistance that's it right so once IBM gets down to this zone, looking to buy, I'm gonna place my stop below the first candle in this channel because this is a pretty tight range. I mean, you're looking at 144.72 compared to 144.66. So I'm gonna give myself that extra little room back there. So assuming I can get in here at 144.93, I'm risking a little under 30 cents with the hopes of going from 144.93 up to 145.80-ish or so. So close to 90 cents. So I'm risking around 30 to make about 80 or 90, right? So that's the ratio you want. You want to hopefully make more than you're risking. If you do that over a number of trades and you have a win percentage of maybe 60, maybe 70% of your completely awesome, you're gonna make money. It's that simple, it's math. This isn't, um, you know, some, some special, there isn't some special sauce or or gambling this literally comes down to just arithmetic all right so let's speed up the action a little bit in the, in the uh, replay tool here in trading sim um, so we can see how IBM performs down here and we have our fast forward features um, uh, and hotkeys so you can quickly kind of get through the action and not have to constantly click down here all right here we go so let's zoom in here a little bit now, what you'll notice, and I just want to pause in here for a second and slow it down. You know, when I first started trading, when I would see this green candle, you know, here, I would just go in. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was like a patience thing, um, fear of missing out, right? But I would go in. One thing I'll caution you is, is whenever you start to do that, in this example, eh, maybe it's 10 cents or 15 cents, right? I'm missing out which isn't that big of a deal but it's more about the behavior once you start doing it with these small ranges you'll notice that 
a stock, you know, you may have a sell target here. It only gets halfway there. You're like, oh, I need to get out, right? So it's going to rear its ugly head later. So just please exercise discipline and patience and just wait for your targets, okay? Here we go. So IBM is getting down to this range here. Um, you can kind of see it coming nicely into uh, the support zone here. Now this is where you want to start to say to yourself, "All right, now I'm really close." All right. All right. Here we go. Now if you're touching the line here. We're gonna buy a hundred. Boom. Right here. All right. So we're in at 144.93. Next thing you want to do, before you do anything else, before you put in your profit target, put in a stop. That's it. That's what we care about. So again, lower this candle, 144.66. We're going to put a stop in at 144, call it um, 62. I, I tend to, you know, place my stops slightly below these lows because sometimes you get these hit fakes. Um, we, you know, they're running a stop by a penny or two and turning around. Um, so again, we're risking, you know, 30 cents, hoping to make, you know, 80 cents or so. So that's good. That's a great, you know, risk reward ratio. All right. So our target's going to be in the 145, 80-ish level. All right. Based on this um, line here. Okay. Going back to the Stoke RSI for a second. You'll notice here you had a buy signal. Quite frankly right here right which will put you up in the 145 20 22 area right but you didn't have a confirming uh support zone that you were buying into you didn't have a another indicator to validate the signal so that's the benefit of waiting right you want to wait until something else confirms your signal so now you saved yourself an additional 30 plus cents on the entry and now you have an oversold stoke rsi in combination with the trend line here okay now again stop below the first low of the channel target up here so let's go so we're going to speed this up to five minutes per second just so we can get through the action pretty quickly now one thing you should remember sometimes it'll roll over they'll roll over and kind of play around here and make you wait a little bit and that's okay you have your stop and play do not panic. All right, here we go. Let me slow it down. So now, you know, that's pretty darn close, right? So you're well within your right to close it out here, okay? Now, you don't want to get too picky because once you're at your target, things will likely get three or four candles on the five minute before things roll. Um, but once they roll, they roll. So, you know, in here, 145.78, 145.83, you know, I'm not gonna make a big fuss about that, right? So I'm gonna cancel this stock market order. I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna sell. Bam, made a quick 90 bucks, right? So made a quick 100 bucks on, you know, within, what is that, you know, 12.55? You know 255 so two hour trade you know not bad not bad but only a hundred shares right you know again you depending on where you are in your financial situation you could trade more or less but the point is you know you want clean patterns okay clear channels you want an indicator that is confirming that hey you're coming into support you know and then here, look, you got a sell signal up here. Did we panic? Nope. Because we knew our sell signal really is up in this area, right? So again, you want to make sure you use these low volatility, large cap stocks, a lot of float. The price movement is predictable. If you want to make more money, you just use more shares, right? But again, you have to have your stops. But if you try to apply these same techniques with these slow stoke indicators or stoke 
RSI or any other oscillator, you are going to have trouble. I've tried it, you know, bash my head up against the wall about it. It's very difficult because you only need a person with a couple million dollars and they can move a low flow stock like that, like a thick in seconds. And not only move it, but move it 10% against you. And um, trading just doesn't have to be that that difficult. All right, so hope you, um, you enjoyed this video. Um, and for those of you that are saying, well, it doesn't always work like this either, Al. You know what, you're right. Um, indicators fail. So to that point, um, if you scroll down further in the article, I'm gonna show you a video where the Stoke RSI in fact does fail, which is why we use our stops. All right, hope this was helpful and uh, good luck day trading. Feel free to uh, shoot me a note at admin at tradingsim.com with any questions um, or feedback on the video. I'd love to chat it up with you guys. And uh, please be sure to like this video. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Please remember to like or share this video. To learn more about how Trading Sim can help you become a profitable trader, please visit our site at tradingsim.com.